find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Right? How to describe Frank? One, two, three, four! Well, there's the head, of course. He never takes it off. You think it's weird? Would it help if I said my facial expressions out loud? Welcoming smile. Delighted look. But what goes on inside the head inside oh. that head? Oh. I find this inspiring. Is music. Hello, Internet. Today is September 2nd, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk about everything movies from the week before, current, and those still to come. So, uh, hey, Sork, how's it going? Hey, ready to talk movies. I'm back from a trip. Uh, I had a drive-in experience this weekend I can't wait to talk about. Oh, yeah? Yeah. In case you're wondering, I am in studio today. You are in studio here could, in Pittsburgh, I could see PA. Sorg from uh, across me. That's right. That's right. I really want some of that pizza. <laughs> and that voice you hear is the great Mike from the state of New York. You guys have great pizza. pizza there. Come on. I know, but you have it right there, like within reaching through the internet, grasping things. Yes, I can reach. I can reach out and touch it. <laughs> um but yeah hey so box office this week guys oh before we get to the box office uh the trailer for this week was frank yes um so so wait so is is the head the guy like like is it like this is just a guy and this is the kind of head he has yeah he's not like stuck in the head or something well, no the, no he it, it's it's a head that he wears yeah it's a head he wears okay um to to uh to set the I lost the words, but um, it's a Sundance film, okay. so that yeah, adds yeah. to the it's art. It's like it's like the it's, it's 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 outside the realm, and yes. that's okay. It is an indie rock version of a luchador gimmick. Okay, <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. Sure. Uh, and but, uh, he, uh, Michael Fassbender, was on Colbert promoting it too, and they actually he performed in the Frank head with like Maggie Gyllenhaal and everyone else from the cast. Yeah, it's very unique. I it sucks that Sundance films don't always get wide releases, um, but they almost always end up on like Netflix. Yeah, so, so I will be looking out for it. The trailers I saw a couple of the trailers; they looked pretty interesting. Um, and I'll t- I'll talk about some other uh, movies I watched that were of that same realm that were equally. I wish I had seen them in theater, but I wouldn't have wanted to pay as much money. Uh, as they probably were in theaters. Um, so yeah, this week uh, in the box office, to everybody's surprise, Guardians was number one. Yes. Oh, what? what? No, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You didn't see it coming, Mike. But Guardians oh, was number one. Hey, we saw. We kicked its crew. <laughs> I mean, in all realistic realism, it was a very slow week. Nothing came out for the holiday. Nothing like, out. nothing was set up for this holiday. What was new? As as above, so below. November Man, uh, what, I even, can't even say that. Ghostbusters anniversary release, which, by the way, was 15th, right? On 300 screens, okay? Um, it's, it, it, okay. It's they like, could have remastered Ghostbusters and put it in IMAX, but no. No, no. No. It, Ghostbusters only did a million less than Lucy, which was number 11. So, you know. <laughs> and yeah. Ghostbusters has been out a little bit longer than Lucy has. I mean, uh, to be honest, I'm even surprised Lucy is still... Well, I mean, it's number 11. Yeah, So, yeah. that's saying um, something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this rundown, I mean, the, the top movie from the opening weekend, As Above, So Below, was number four. <laughs> it's too early for horrible horror movies. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's too early for that. You got you guys, you got to do those when it's not still summer. Uh, but, you know, big news, I think it, this week was the week that um, uh, Guardians actually did beat Winter Soldier for the year. 
Yep. Yeah, actually, um, it happened before the weekend, actually. Right. I think it happened on Thursday. So that was pretty interesting. Um, is it for, t- for the year? Winner? Yeah. It, it, it's total gross. Yeah, yeah, for the year. Yeah. So it was that. And then it, I guess it also took Lego, the Lego movie. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty impressive. And to be honest, next weekend, there's nothing coming out either. So there's a very good chance Guardians is going to keep I'm, rolling. I'm fairly certain. Uh, let's say I was in the theater. I, I saw Expendables and Lucy. We'll talk about those moves at length later. But there was like 10 cars maybe on the Lucy and Expendables side. The Guardians and Ninja Turtles was like looked like it was packed back there. Really? Yes. That's impressive. Because mm-hmm. like I, I, I would love to know the ratio of people who have not seen this movie we were just like on word of mouth saying, okay, we're going to go see like either how bad or awesome is hey, Turtles. We should or... finally go see this movie because yeah. everybody else has both of them. And that's a great one to punch <laughs> at a drive through. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, at a drive through. If they're paired up together. Mm-hmm. At this point, though, it would be very smart not to pair those up at a drive through. Right? You, know, you wouldn't so want people to would come movie. back, you think? Well, yeah, you would. Yeah, two hot movies like that, you wouldn't want to pair them Depends on how many screens you have. Um, I mean... If my drive-in was showing Guardians and Ninja Turtles, even though I didn't like Ninja Turtles that much, I would go see them both again. But still, like, what are the kids going to like? You know, I, I, I think they that's the They will like question. seeing those movies again. Exactly. Trust me, little kids watch the same 22-minute cartoons over and over again. They'll yeah. go see those two mm-hmm. movies again. The the argument yeah. is for the for the drive-in, it would make more sense for them to split those you're, up. You're looking for like a re- repeat visitor, right? Yeah. But I, I can't see somebody hitting a drive-in twice in one weekend. I want to I wanna meet the person who's the Titanic watcher, who's like, you know, when Titanic came out and the and the the girls were like, oh my gosh, I've seen it like eight times. Like, I want to meet that, that person. Mm-hmm. I've seen it twice. a lot cheaper then. And I, I would I would probably yes, that's true. Um all right, so summer movie scorecard. Uh quite frankly, I guess there's not really much to talk about. So let's just go through our winners and losers. Okay, no, let's just go through our losers because we know who the winner is for this year. Guardians. I'm sure we could all Guardians. agree. Guardians. Seconded by can we can we even count Captain America as a summer movie at this point? Uh, well, it came out in April, so no. Yeah, yeah it wasn't no. a summer movie. Yeah, <laughs> it came out before I turned thirty-one, so no, it was not a summer movie. Um, I mean, next to uh, the Planet of the Apes, which was really good, I it doesn't even compare. Um, in terms of losers, I mean, I was looking through the list. They put like some movies that I don't necessarily agree with, and this list is is the Rotten Tomatoes uh, Summer Movie Guide 2014 uh, scorecard that you're, yeah. that you're talking about. Yeah, the other one is a uh, winners and losers. It's from uh, Hitflix. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like Expendables three, they put as a loser. I don't really agree with that. It wasn't the greatest movie, but it wasn't the worst movie. Well, I, I, well, what are you talking about? Are we talking about how well the movie was, or how did it perform at the box office? What's your What's your point here? Okay, now, that's I think what... as a movie, it does as well as you expect Expendables to be. You don't expect it to be a great movie. You expect it to be the Expendables. And I think it really delivered on that. Now, no, it got thrashed between Ninja Turtles and <laughs> Guardians. It did not do well. But I wonder if that's enough. This is going to do tremendous on the on the DVD and rental market. Yeah, of well, course, you know, the argument to that was it got leaked. Mm-hmm. I don't well, no, I don't think the leak had anything to do with it. No, it didn't no. bring anything new to the uh, movie. I'm sorry. Like, Go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. Expendables 2. The new people they brought in were literally on camera for five minutes each. Mm-hmm. That was the cool thing about the first Expendables, which I actually enjoyed, is that all the big stars were in the entire movie. Mm-hmm. You can't just say, like, Harrison Ford's going to be in this movie when he's probably in for five minutes. Uh, Mel Gibson's going to be in this movie when he's probably in for 15 minutes. Uh, like, Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of people. The only, the only one you see consistently through Expendables 3 is Stallone. In the long this time. is what I'm saying. Yeah, but I the mean, how many people? Everyone was in it all the time. True, true. Uh, but but it's not your leak that you're talking about. The person that's going to go see this is not concerned with the leak. They're not yep. internet people. They're my dad. Okay. Oh, uh, that's a good point. That's, the people that actually uh, watch the leak are internet people who weren't going to go pay to see the movie anyway. Exactly. That's very true. Exactly. Uh, I would say the one movie I do agree with on the uh, 
the Hitflix, I think, uh, site is Sin City. That was not as good as I. It was seems like it, it seems like it wasn't serviced very well to me. Um, as far as advertising, like I was somebody who loved the first Sin City, and it didn't get me excited. Yeah, it, like it was the fifth best comic movie this year. That's not good. Mm-hmm. That's but again, good. I think like we talked about in previous episodes, um, it's a different era where it's not oh, it's a comic book movie, so we're all going to go see it. It's well, we've had a lot of these, and we've had a lot of these this year. And we've had the Guardians, and this doesn't compare if you say, hey, it's a comic book movie. Or, and, and, and again, hey, remember that comic book movie 10 years ago? It just it just does not compute and doesn't turn into something big. Maybe this will do good on, on the post. You know, I'll go see it. Maybe I, I'll actually like it in comparison to the first one. Uh, but it, it just was not serviced at, at all very well. Uh, I presume Lucy is a, is a loser on this list, Malenga? It is a loser, but they kind of, you know fluff it off by saying uh scarlett johansson's a winner because she was just everywhere but i would consider lucy a loser um well i think i think it's an interesting uh because you think you're going in seeing a black widow kick-ass movie and it's not no it's not it's at certainly all. not you get black widow kick-ass movie for maybe about 15 minutes and then they turn into something different which was interesting um you know not worth going to the theater for i don't think uh but it was. I thought it was an interesting movie. It really was. It's not what I would go pay ten bucks for to go see Guardians. Certainly. Oh yeah, no, I would definitely throw my money at Guardians again. It was the perfect movie for a drive-in, and so was Expendables for me. Um, a quick note. I'm going to butcher this guy's name, but moving on. Uh, Game of Thrones swordsman. Um, basically, the one that was teaching. Um, Arya? Arya Stark. Yeah. Arya Stark uh, swordsmanship um, and how to fight with class. Uh, he's joining Star Wars. Oh, cool. Um, I just think it's interesting that this is now the second person from Game of Thrones. That's true, Let, what, so. Now, let's be honest. Game of Thrones people are everywhere. You know how many people I've seen in Doctor Who? For okay. instance, they're just everywhere. And they're all great yeah. actors and they're going to end up everywhere. That's true. Speaking of Doctor Who, as a side note, uh, maybe not. We will, we'll, we'll get back to that. What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me here? We'll get back. We'll to what are you doing to me to here, that. Malango? I just watched the Into the Daleks. Come on. You saw, you me saw the too. first one. Oh I, wait, you, I, you're a second one then. I, I'm at the second one. I, I, second I am subscribing yet. to this stuff on Amazon now. Yeah, you. Told I am me that. paying out of pocket to watch my Doctor Who. Very nice. I'm getting a lot of noise in my headphones. Sorry, guys. So. It's all right. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll see if we can work with that. Can nobody hear that? Uh, no, that's all you. Okay, that's, that's, that's most fine. likely all you. Yeah, um, yeah. I just think it's cool. I think the big thing that is definitely cool about it is the fact that it opens the door even more to Star- not not so much Star Wars fans, but the fact that hey, you know, you know these people that are now going to be in Star Wars. Like you've seen these actors before. Like definitely come out and see this. I think that that plays a lot of testimony to that. Um, I, I think people are going to go see the new Star Wars regardless. It's just a matter of how like good it is that it has staying power. All right, so, exactly, exactly. It's like Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Everyone was going to go see Godzilla, but it did not last long because it honestly wasn't that I good. I can not hear Mike in New York. All right, so moving on. Uh, just, I'm just going to wrap these two stories together because Disney is playing big brother to Stanley, um, which... Quite honestly, my two cents on it is it's kind of funny because some of the jokes in the article, it basically states in the article that uh, Stanley wanted to do some more racier things with uh, with scenes in Guardians of the Galaxy. And Disney basically shut him down. They're like, no, we're not going to do that. But um, one of the scenes that Pratt did uh, with, the, with the Pollock scene uh, with the blacklight in guardians like shows the testimony that like it's kind of like ah, maybe could have just let stanley do what he was going to do well but, the, the scene that they wanted stan lee to do was they wanted to have him be part of the collector's collection which like stan lee cameos are fun yeah but they do kind of take you out of the movie and him being part of the collector's collection that seems like a 
bigger fourth wall breach than you should have in a Marvel movie. What like, unless they, he's actually going to be an important figure in one of the, like, in the overall Marvel Cinematic Universe. The cameo that they did with him just being a random alien hitting on a younger chick, that was fine. Yeah, because I will say, like, I guess if he had been, because it would have made, it would have been, I guess, more interesting or, or f- I guess, more appealing in sense of humor. If that was, like, at the end where they showed, like, Howard the Duck and maybe you see Stan Lee in, like, a case like that. I do agree showing him, like, in a case like that during the movie would definitely break, like, wait, okay, so what's he doing there? Kind of fourth wall. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Like and, it, it, it works for the Lego Marvel game. I don't think it would work for the actual Marvel movies. That's just me. I mean, I, I think it's a bit of, it's too much. Like him pretending to be Hugh Hefner or him pretending to be Larry King. Yes, that's fine because that's just to get him into the movie. But otherwise, it's just a little much. Yeah. And Black Panther. Uh, I mean, I guess I should be excited about this, right? Nah, yeah, I think it's all right. I I like to see what they do with it, but I've never been huge on Black Panther. I just think he's interesting. I thought it was weird when they made it like a BET series, as far as the animation side. Like there was well, a, and plus it was like a Marvel Knights thing, which is like the the comic book motion comic book thing. Like it was it was a, it was just an odd pairing. Um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of to see what they do with the movie too. Yeah, I uh, I I kind of hope they get the uh, guy who played Jackie Robinson in Forty Two hmm. to beat T'Challa. I think I think because they've already blown their wad on Idris Elba, so hmm. he's already Heimdall. He can't beat T'Challa, but the guy who played Jackie Robinson and he was in the um the biopic that came out earlier, the James Brown one. Hmm. I can't think of his name offhand, uh, but he I think would be really good as T'Challa. I think he would be. He's got an edge to him, but he's on the whole very likable. Like I think that I think that's what you need for T'Challa because you need him to be kind of like, like okay, he's approachable and likable, and you can see him as a superhero and as a leader. But do not mess with him because he will cut you with his <laughs> vibranium claws. <laughs> Speaking of people cutting, let's jump to DC. Oh. Are, are they a bundle of joy? So basically, I know we talked about this on the show about DC becoming very dark. And I mean, I said in the past, I like a dark character when it's due. Like, I think Batman should have been dark. I don't know how that's going to play across in Batman Superman. Yeah, I'm kind of up for that. But it seems like across the board, DC's decided to go with this like darker route. What do you think, Mike? Oh. Uh... DC bothers me so much. <laughs> DC because just because the Green Lantern movie, which had a lot of jokes and a very funny comedian and Ryan Reynolds, yeah, did not work, doesn't mean you have to have a no jokes policy for any of your movies. I mean, the rumors are that now that they've crippled Jimmy Olsen to the point where he has bionic legs, like there is enough dark stuff in just the history of Batman. Yeah. That Superman is supposed to be the polar opposite of Batman. That's why they make such a good team together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Superman was a farm boy raised in Kansas. He literally had nothing wrong with his life. Plus, ever. Like, like Superman is is hope and, 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 you know, farm boy, boy scout, like, he should be a little lighter. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. I mean, DC knows how to do this. They did this with their own cartoons. Like, just have Bruce Tim write the movies. Mm-hmm. He seems to do pretty good at it. Or look at the Suicide, Suicide Squad movie that just came out. That is chock full of jokes and very good, but also has very dark moments in it. Mm-hmm. Like, there is a way to do it. I mean, Christ, we... Guardians made us feel for a raccoon that was experimented on, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, they're and obviously said a dick joke. They're taking it a different direction, and they don't do enough crossover with their comic book scribes 
and that's long time a long time been a problem with them so um and we'll see what it does we'll see if it pays off for them i don't think it will because no. i don't think the appeal is going to be there not like yeah. the lightheartedness of all the marvel stuff they the already Avengers pulled series. back from going right up against marvel yeah they already yeah. they already blinked they I mean, even the I fact know. that even the fact that we're getting the same Superman, and I mean, like I, I'll give them credit for not doing another reboot on Superman because that's just getting annoying. But I think the route that they're going with Superman, like you said, Sorg, it's gonna it's not polar opposite. We're gonna have a dark Superman and a darker so, Batman. Okay, let's we'll see what happens with the dark Superman. It okay, might be let's see cool. what happens. But 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 I, I I am iffy that they're bringing the whole universe into this yeah. dark version. Um, and we'll see what happens. And then and then it's something's going to go bad. Something's going to Green Lantern on this, and it's all going to go south. And they're going to scrap the whole thing and all the plans they've had for three five years, whatever that that leak was, if it's for real. And because because Warner Brothers doesn't know how to stick to something like that. I mean, they could kind of lighten it up with with Flash if they decide to bring him. We'll see. I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. And again, we're only talking about the second movie. Yeah. I mean, if and you if you look at something like Marvel Cineverse movies, have had a variety of tones. It's possible, right? I thought Iron, Iron Man three definitely had a bit of a darker tone. Yeah. Uh, not freaking, you know, Dark Knight Rises or anything like that. But still, it's within the realm. It fit. It was a different style. Everything like the movies have like felt like part of a whole, yet have a different feel to it. And well, Captain America two was serious. Like mm-hmm. Captain America two was world terrorism threat level. Like that right. wasn't localized within a town like a Smallville or a Gotham or, or New York City or whatever. That was worldwide. Like terrorism and they handled it very seriously very legitimately and they also managed to make you laugh god forbid mm-hmm. all right uh we should probably look at what we watched this weekend yep let's do it you want me you to want, go first you want me to I, I don't know yeah i could go first uh so i saw nothing in theaters okay because theaters are wait dead. hold on we, we should point oh no you did see stuff in theaters sorg i was gonna say this might be the first week that none of us saw anything new in theaters <laughs> yeah. of sorts of sorts we'll get to that so i saw um a movie uh it came out a while ago in theaters uh called begin again um i was pleasantly pleased uh two notable uh kieran knightley and uh, Mark uh, Ruffalo, Hulk. Mark yes. Ruffalo, Hulk. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of your weird like like I'm sure this this has been done before in an '80s movie, but it's basically like your your indie small music like director guy. You know, he owns his recording studio and he's looking and he's going through his breakdown. He's looking for the next big thing and he finds it in the most unlikely place and stuff. It's not a love story, which is good. It has a lot of good music if you're into that kind of stuff. But I enjoyed it. I liked it. And then I also went and rewatched Chef. And if you haven't seen I've been Chef. I've great things about this movie. Uh, it got re- re-released this weekend? Yeah, it's amazing if you haven't seen it. Go out and I'm see gonna it. Try and get out you to you see talked about it before. Really curious about I enjoyed it greatly. So I think it's the third time I've watched it. Nice, nice. I, I want to hear about what Mike watched because we were talking about this a little bit off. Uh... <laughs> mm, it's all right, Sorg. It's all right. First, first, I'll say the old movies I watched because I wasn't planning on watching anything new this week. Uh, I saw Camp Nowhere. It was on. It was on Cinemax on demand. It's a fun flick from the 90s with Christopher Lloyd as a camp counselor that's really a con man, but it's fantastic. If you haven't seen that, go see it. It's very good bubblegum pop fun. Uh, I also saw Private Parts, the Howard Stern documentary, I guess. Uh, It's funny. It just makes me laugh because I love the uh, scenes with Paul Giamatti in it. But uh, the big thing I saw and actually just finished watching about two hours ago, the unauthorized Saved by the Bell movie. (laughs) <laughs> oh wow oh my dear lord oh, I, man. i'm so excited i'm so excited 
I'm so scared that I liked it. <laughs> um, it. It's told from the perspective of the guy who played Screech, Dustin Diamond. Dustin Diamond. Yeah. Um, so much to the point that when they're doing, like, when, like, he does all the narration. Mm-hmm. Not Dustin Diamond, but the character playing him. Uh, and uh, he does, like, the timeout thing and addresses the crowd. And, oh, it, like, I gotta say, the actors in it, for what they were given, did a really good job. Some of the <laughs> acting was even better than Saved by the Bell, which <laughs> is fantastic. I like the way you're, like, for what they were given. <laughs> well, I mean, it is, uh, it's very pro Screech. I don't know how much of it to necessarily believe. There's um, a scene of Dustin Diamond in the line at a movie theater punching out a heckler, calling him Screech. I okay. I I'm like, dude. I saw you on Hulk Hogan Celebrity Wrestling. You are not that buff. It's fine. You're not Carrot Top. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but it, if you can find it, it's on Lifetime. Um, Normally, I would never advocate someone to go to Lifetime unless there was a good reason. <laughs> this is a great reason. It's a If you were a kid of the 90s and have watched even one episode of Saved by the Bell, the songs are era accurate, which is fantastic. Nice. Um, the outfits. My freaking God. The 90s outfits. So good, um, and the like. The actors don't necessarily look like like Mark Paul Gossel or Tiffany Amber Thiessen and Mario Lopez. They don't really look like any of them, but they play the parts really well. Like I believe that the kid that they got to play Mark Paul Gossler was kind of like a a Kmart knockoff of Mark Paul Gossler. Like I I buy it. <laughs> And from the back, they all look exactly like their counterparts, which is they, fantastic. They won the the from from the back test. Oh yeah, oh from the there's one shot where they show um, uh, Tiffany Amber Thiessen and Elizabeth Berkley in the auditions for Kelly, mm-hmm. and they first show them from the back. I'm like, oh my god, it's Jesse and Kelly. <laughs> so yes. Find it on Lifetime. I don't know if it's on uh, Lifetime. On it's on. Or it's on the website. Uh, it, it's just I'm having trouble getting like the video to play, but it looks like it's like, hey, here's the full movie. And oh, good. actually, it does look like it's kicking in now. 1990. Oh my god. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, sword. Yes, I'm watching the beginning of this. It's not on the sword. computer. I can bring up. Unfortunately, they go back all the way to the days of Good Morning, Miss Bliss. Oh no. They have a wait. fake Haley Mills. Oh, I can't wow. wait. Oh, it's so good. It's so like it's better than most of the movies I watched this summer in theaters. <laughs> we'll put it that way. It's better than most of them. It's not better than all of them, obviously. And but... that's your real uh, blockbuster summer thing. I have this bookmarked. I'm completely watching this as soon as I can. Excellent. Yes. I, I sent a Snapchat video of the uh, of the actress playing Jesse doing the I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so scared video. I have this on the computer I can't bring up and it looks so great. <laughs> it's fantastic. No, it, I would watch it. So yeah. awesome. I, I can already predict right now it will be my favorite movie of the fall. <laughs> it's an old prediction, but I'm going to stick to it. Nice. Mike, or Sorg, what'd you watch? Hold on, I'm tweeting about this movie. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's so good. It's so, so good, you oh, guys. Oh, I'm tweeting it. Okay, okay, it's on the Twitters. It's on the Twitters. Okay, yes. so, no, yeah, we went to the theater. We're up in New York. Um, so it wasn't anywhere we could see Ghostbusters or anything since it was released over this past weekend. Uh, but we had a drive-in. There's a great, uh, as advertised on the very uh, old-school-looking site, I need to kill this stream of Saved by the Bell. Um, the largest uh, uh, drive-in theater in, in New York State uh, has two screens. Uh, pretty pretty good. I, it's got. It looked like it had digital projection and everything. Uh, look, looked real awesome. Um, so it was Guardians or Ninja Turtles, like I mentioned, or Lucy in Expendables 3. Uh, and like I said, Lucy, uh, it was, you know, you get Black Widow kicking ass, you know, at the beginning. 
It's based in supposedly some kind of science and Darwinism and, and, and some theories. I don't know how much is, is like based on real stuff. Uh, but they definitely take their liberties beyond that. Uh, you know, as you, you suspect, there's this drug, uh, which opens up your mind kind of like, you know, what we talked about with, the uh, forget what the other movie was, had a very similar concept, but this goes even more that it's, it's up to a hundred percent of your mind and what happens at that point, what you have control over. Um, and, uh, I enjoyed it very heavy and weird with stock footage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. very very weird um i mean that's what mike and i talked about when we talked about our review mm -hmm. they hit you with that instantly so you know what what kind of movie what am i watching here yeah so it's like like sorg you saw cosmos right yeah i've watched a few episodes of it that's what i was saying lucy is like a neil degrasse tyson produced superhero movie i get it (laughs) i get it i completely get it now um but uh no i liked it again you know seeing it like both movies for seven bucks it's it's pretty much it's good for that I, I think that's the perfect price point for you to go see something like that. Uh, Expendables 3, like I said, I think it was a lot better. I think they had a good pace. I think it mixed things yeah. up. I like the new faces. I like the, I like the uh, uh, you know, there's a very, uh, we're going to replace you with the young guys attitude. Mel Gibson was great as the bad guy. Um, I feel sorry for him. Why? He's. I don't feel sorry. He's kind of buried trying. himself. Yeah, but it's like, he's such a good actor, and this is what he's been relegated to. This and Machete 2. <laughs> is he really a good actor anymore, though? I, I'd say he Anything was. Anything he pops up in, he's very much a parody of himself. Get Into the Gringo is a good movie. I don't know that one. Oh, uh, gosh. Paycheck? Okay, Paycheck. Or not Paycheck. I meant Payback. What Women Want? Payback. Paycheck was the Ben Affleck. Movie. Yeah, Payback <laughs> is the one that I'm thinking of. Payback was basically... Uh, Get Into the Gringo was basically Payback, just revamped for Mexico. But with Mel Gibson. No, it's, no, it's pay. Do I, do I keep saying the wrong thing? Payback was Mel Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. Get into the gringo was also Mel Gibson. Yeah. Just in the prison. Okay. Um, but no, good it movies. Fun. It was fun. Like I said, that, that my dad will like it. Yeah. Era, you know, uh, I, it was fun. Mindless stuff, blowed up action. Somebody uh, gets shot it, who should not have gotten shot where he got shot in or at, but, uh, that's okay. He doesn't Are die. Are you saying Chuck Norris got about... shot in the dick? No, and no, every no, time, no. And every time somebody like gets shot early in the movie and you know he's going to be hospitalized for the rest of the movie, you're like, oh, they couldn't clear his schedule or they didn't want to pay him the money, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, there's very much. I mean, they are shoe hoarding. Like, when they have the trailer where it's like, here's 20 names oh. you remember. How do you think they're going to do a movie like, like that? You know how they... Oh, quick spoiler. You know how they uh, justified it, right? What? Wesley Snipes. That's how they justified shooting him. Yeah, but no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because they made him Wesley Slipes way too badass. For what did they? Movie. What did you, wait? What did, Missy said when that happened? It, they they sprung him. They shot the other guy and said, like, "What? They can have only one token black guy <laughs> yeah. on, the, on the team." Apparently, um, Wesley Slipes was like, "I will not do this movie with any other bro- like no other brother to get the spotlight." <laughs> Even the new like, team. Like, Even the new I, team had nobody. Yeah, like, <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> Although, like, the first 10 minutes of the movie made me want to pull out some Demolition Man and watch. <laughs> I gotta say. Uh, but no, it was a blast. Did he, it, wait, did, did Wesley Snipes have a big sword? Uh, oh, sword? no, he was a knife guy. Yeah, he was a knife guy. He was guy. a knife guy. They called him the doctor. He did have a good... Yes. Like, a wait, decent wait, sword. hold. So we have a black doctor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if Britain's not going to do it, at least the Expendables did, right? Uh, Anyways, hold on a second. Um, uh... uh <laughs> Other surprise, very enjoyable in this movie, Kelsey Grammer. Had a very nice portion. Uh, Harrison Ford, way better than you expected. You expected he'd just be like, you know, cameo uh, uh, Schwarzenegger and Willis in the first one. He did start off that way. He, well, it turned into more like what Schwarzenegger and Willis, Willis are, a little bit spoilery, uh, in the second one. Yeah. Which, by the way, is my favorite part of the second one. Um, but... I digress. Anyways, uh, but no, it was fun. It was fun for a, a, a cheap look and everything. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. Is that everybody? Yeah, um, that's it. That's everybody. We should talk about Doctor Who for... No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. No. Nope. Mike, Mike's saying we got to go. Um, I'll just say real quick, Doctor Who, I am okay with this Doctor. That's all I'm going to say. I'm on board. <laughs> 
I'm on I think, board now. I think everybody came around this episode into the Daleks as the second one. Um, heard a lot of good things uh, from it. I just wanted it. Rick Moranis to have a cameo on it, but that's just me. Yes. Yes. You'll see why if you see it. All right. Yes. Mad Mike, where can we find you? You can find me at Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter machines. Nice, nice. Sorg? I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. SorgatronMedia.com is where all the shows are. This is number two of six that we do here on Tuesday nights. And we have so much more coming as well. Uh, check this out on uh, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, uh, YouTube as well. We're out there. Go look it up. The Rambling Movie Minute and all that. There's links uh, over on the post over at SorgatronMedia.com. We're on the internet. We're all over the internet. Um, and check out the Sorgatron Media Everything feed if you want to see everything that we do around here. And you can find me on the Twitter at Rambling Mango. Uh, throw me stuff. I will get back to people if you throw me a question. I will. In time. Or Mike Sorg, Sorgatron will yell at me and then I will respond. Uh, but also check out our Facebook group where we like to throw up random polls and random questions and trailers. They're not so random, but they're fun and entertaining and a great place to mingle for movies quit giving me the look of disappointment <laughs> anyway uh with that being said uh everybody have a great uh week and we'll see you next week mm-hmm.